Hello, everybody. Welcome back to In the Trenches. Victory Monday is here. Uh, we don't get a lot of these this year. Uh, they're few and far between. Uh, I left my pom-poms at home. I'm sorry. But I'm not going to be rah-rah guy today because I had, to, I had to sit through that game yesterday, first and foremost, which was tough to watch. Those were two bad football teams. Um, we beat the Carolina Panthers at home. After a coaching change by three points, once again, it's not bringing out the pom poms. It's not going to be a lot of rah rah stuff. You want a game, you're supposed to win. If you're like still competing, I guess that's my mentality today. Is yeah, I guess they're not really doing anything. The Bucks don't look didn't look worse or better than they had been all year. Yesterday, they looked about the same. I thought Baker Mayfield was terrible yesterday. I'm sorry. If you're a Baker Mayfield fan and you're going up and down, yes or no, because it's been up and down all year, that was a no yesterday. That was not a good game by that quarterback yesterday. He got lucky quite a few times. Now, this is what's good. You're playing against a guy on the other side of the field, and Mr. Young, who plays young and looks lost. That Carolina Panthers team... Now, after I say all this, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know preface I'm gonna preface this by I'm gonna say, but that Carolina Panthers team is not good. But we did not play them. We didn't out physical them. We didn't out anything them, to be honest with you. Here, I got the box scores here. Box scores can be deceiving. We all know that. Box scores aren't a big deal, but it's the Carolina Panthers who have been before the game, I looked at you know, I usually do that Saturday show on the Bone 1025, the football show. I look up statistics about the Carolina Panthers, where they're good. They weren't good anywhere. Okay? They weren't good on defense. They weren't good running the ball. They weren't good on offense. They weren't good at uh, completion percentage. They weren't good in big plays. They weren't good sacking the quarterback. They weren't good at anything. All right? We did not play them yesterday. And if they play 10 times, I'm not sure they don't win four times. I'm being serious about that. We gave up 282 yards offense to Carolina, who just, they look lost. We gave up 100 and 33 yards to a team without a quarterback. We got to stop, stop saying that we're running. We stopped the run. We don't. Now, not having any linebackers is a problem. All right. And to put Ryan Neal in there after practicing the linebacker position for six snaps is not an equation for success. You gave up 133 yards rushing to the Carolina Panthers at home. Like, that's. Not a reason for us to start winning football games. It's not. Carolina sucks, yo. They really do. We both got we both got 15 first downs. Yay. E, total plays. Carolina, 11 more plays. Eight punts by each team. Eight punts by each team. Go to another game. If I if I if I wasn't writing or doing things on the Buccaneers, I'd have changed the game yesterday and gone to any other game. That is not a pretty football game. I think it was the Bears might have played Carolina once this year and like Thursday night. That might have been uglier. I'm not sure, but the only pretty thing that was on that football field yesterday was Mike Evans. That's it. There was nothing else that I'm going to write home about on that football field yesterday. Mike Evans. For God's sakes, Mike Evans, stop making everybody look bad. The same Mike Evans that wanted money before the season, we said you're not worth it, is our best football player still. Do I think they should sign Mike Evans to an extension? I don't think Mike Evans will do that right now. Mike Evans is still, yesterday he played like a top 10 wide receiver. I don't believe he still is, but he has the ability to. Next year he's going to be one year older. So you can't expect Mike Evans to... Sign a five-year contract for a hundred million dollars. He's probably not going to sign a five-year contract. Although there may be a team out there with buttloads of money that throws it at Mike and say, "Maybe for the next couple of years, you're the guy." Dallas Cowboys or something like that. You, you never know. It just takes a New York team. Mike Evans is good for your locker room. Mike Evans is good for your huddle. Mike Evans is certainly good for the football field. Mike Evans is good for your organization. All right. So we're blessed to still have Mike Evans. 
Although I just don't know if the Buccaneers are ready to pull up the Brinks truck to give him all that money. I don't know if that's conducive to building a team. A team right now who is struggling to get wins, at the end of the season, if you say what's priority, I'm not sure your priority can be to, to sign a, an old wide receiver. Not when we need everything. We need Our offensive line is not great. Our defensive line is not good. Like, we, we sit there and gas up uh, Kansi. He's still a very young football player. Upside, yes. All right? JTS, I think they're finally coming to their right minds and putting his Nara non-Russian ass on the bench. Yesterday, he made one play-ish, and it was face-masking a guy who was dead, dead in the water, and that would have been done, and they wouldn't have got a, a two-point conversion. So you basically gave him two points. Anytime the kid does something good, he does something to undo it. You get an interception, you throw the ball at somebody, you get a 15-yard penalty. I mean, come on now, let's stop, let's stop. The, those guys in the locker room are watching the film, and I guarantee they don't want that kid in the, on the football field anymore. Yeah, yeah, Diaby's better. Everybody we got is better. They just weren't drafted that high, all right? So the Buccaneers, they get it done, 21-18 at home against a 1-10 in football team. That's reeling, just lost their coach, just lost their offensive coordinator. And we're in there fighting and scrapping and clawing to get a victory at home. Did we outplay the Carolina Panthers? Nope, we didn't. I don't even think in any aspect of the game did we play them. Did we outplay them? And what we have to be worried about right now is I'm not sure Baker's progressing as a quarterback. Because there was a time, you go back four games ago, statistically, Baker looked better. He started to fall off a little bit now. And to look at Baker's statistics for the game yesterday, I think he had 30 throw, throws for less than 200 yards passing. It's not, And there were some interceptions left out in that football field, for sure. And he just doesn't look, he doesn't look comfortable to me. Baker does not look comfortable. He had that one throw. If it, thank God for uh, Young throwing the ball backwards, okay? I I've, I've, I watched footballs from the age, I played from age seven, watched it before that, played all the way into my 30s, still watching football at 56 years old. I've never seen a quarterback not get hit and throw the ball backwards. And Bryce Young did that yesterday. He was looking forward, he just panicked. He panicked and just threw the ball backwards, like literally. I've never seen that in all my years. If, thank God for that throw, or the one throw that Baker threw, I don't know if it slipped out of his hand, but Baker sure doesn't look like he has a whole lot of arm strength to me. There ain't a whole lot of zip on that football. A lot of times that ball's coming out, I'm like, yeesh. He's, he's not old, but he's not young as far as football standards. Baker takes hits. He doesn't look healthy to me. Something doesn't look right. But that was not fun to watch yesterday. It was a rough game to watch altogether. There wasn't anything. There wasn't big hits. There wasn't... We look soft up the middle. And listen, I understand we're, we're minus a linebacker. Vita Vea, come on now. Come on now, Vita. There's many, many weeks in a row now where I've not really heard Vita Vea's name at all. And not making any impact at all. So, first of all, he's not playing nearly as much. And I just don't hear his name nearly as much, unfortunately. K.J. Britt went out early once again, and I think that hurt us. And, you know, sitting here talking to Jason, he brought up a fact about special teams. You have to understand that special teams are dominated by linebackers, mostly backup linebackers, and receivers, backup receivers and running backs. And if you have that many starting linebackers out, that means those people that are the backups are normally special teams guy, they're making more, they're getting more, you know, reps. Sometimes it takes away from the special teams, and our punt protection is porous. We're going to mess around and give up a punt block here pretty soon. And those are other ways we can lose. I just don't think we, I don't see the hunger. I don't see the hunger in playing at home against a team that you're supposed to be better than. We're just giving up gouging runs up the middle, six yards. If I if I call that game for Carolina yesterday, I'd have kept on running that damn football. That's for sure. We couldn't. It seemed like they were getting six yards a pop, right up the gut. 
And that's usually where Vita Vea stays, all right? It just didn't look the same. Chris Godwin, he's not the same football player. I don't know. At the beginning of this year, I thought he was going to be the guy. I made the prediction that he was going to be number one. He's not. Mike Evans is still clearly number one. Godwin had a drop. I know he's had a couple drops the last couple weeks, and he's just not the same. He's not the same. It's not, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and bellyache the whole time because we won the game, but if you're a Buccaneer fan and you feel good coming out of that game, you're not really watching because that's not good enough to beat any other football team in, NFL, in the NFL. At home, with everything at stake, you beat Carolina by three points. At home. It's got to be better than that. It has to be. All right, and when we play a young quarterback like we did yesterday, I mean, we got four sacks on him. But as a former offensive lineman, I know what to watch. That young kid drops his eyes real fast. When I say drops his eyes, young quarterbacks do this. Okay, and I'm obviously we're on a, a podcast, but young quarterbacks when they feel a rush, they look down to see what's happening. But this is the problem. Brad Johnson never looked down. Brad Johnson would feel it, move around a little bit, and get rid of the ball. Young quarterbacks, that's what happens sometimes when you have a more mobile quarterback. Sometimes you have a more mobile quarterback, you give up more sacks. He feels a rush. He looks down to see where to evade it. This is the problem. Once you look down and look at the rush, you're not looking at your wide receivers anymore. And you can't complete a pass anymore. So we, young quarterbacks do that. This kid, Bryce Young, did that all day yesterday. He gave it two seconds, and all of a sudden he started to look for the rush. Then that ball couldn't come out of his hand. It was not, that was not good football at all. It wasn't fun football. Every week I'm bringing up Tristan Wurst being on the field. At first they were talking groin. I knew it was a high ankle sprain the whole time. I knew that. Groin doesn't keep on. If you keep, if you're going down for a groin every game, you'll stop going down. Okay, that high ankle sprain. I told you guys, you can go back and rewind in the trenches if you want. You can go if you want. They don't go away. When do they go away? Never. Once you get a wicked high ankle sprain, it never goes away, and he never rested it. That's the thing when you play football. The unfortunate part is this. Like you have people in here who say, oh, I sprained my finger. And you have a splint on your finger and you walk around for a month with a splint on your finger and you make sure nobody bangs in your finger because your finger hurts. If you're a football player and you dislocate your finger, they pop it back in and they push you back on the football field. Now, when do you think you get to rest that finger? Because you gotta have to, you have to smash it into face masks right after that. The next day you gotta practice to smash it into things. A week from that point, you're going to have to play again and smash it into things, so you don't really get a chance to, to heal. Tristan Wirfs has a high ankle sprain, and he's 300 and something pounds, blocking other 300 and something pound guys. He has plays every Sunday, and he has to practice as well. It ain't getting better. Your ankle's, your ankle's not going to get better till the off season, and you get a chance to start working it and strengthening it and get back, and by the next training camp, it'll be stronger, but not the same. Not the same. Once you get that high ankle sprain, to keep on coming back, and he's fighting through it, and I'm I feel for him because I know exactly what he's going through. I know exactly what Tristan Wirth's going through. I've been there, done that, had high ankle sprain issues, and it makes for a long, long football season. The Buccaneers keep on. I don't think anybody can say the Buccaneers are a well coached football team. There was a situation yesterday on the goal line. They had 10 players on the field. I'm watching Vita Vea complaining, balls run, touchdown. I mean, come on, guys. It's not like, this is not a new system. They're not, we don't have new, we have some new players, but this is a, this stuff's been happening all year long. And when you keep on talking about you guys getting misaligned and misassignments and miss, it's a lot of missing. But that all comes down to coaching. When are we going to think that our coaches are getting us out of some situations? I don't know if our coaches are putting us in good situations. They're really not. So when, when is it going to get to the point where these Buccaneer coaches are putting these players in a situation where they have a leg up? It just seems like everything is uphill for the Buccaneers. Everything 
that they do is uphill. Everything. Yesterday we ran the ball okay. Maybe we didn't run it enough. We can't say we're a running football team. We still haven't done that consistent enough, and we're probably ranked 31st in the league. Definitely can't say you're a run team. You talk about talent, go up and down the roster. Kate Otten, I mean, who you com- if, you th- if you think he's good, who are you comparing him to? Who are you comparing him to in the league? I didn't even know he played yesterday. I saw him go in motion a couple times. Other than that, I didn't really know, didn't really know Kate Otten did much yesterday. Okay? And when you're looking at our quarterback, and maybe if you're looking at Carolina's quarterback as well, you're looking at a 5'10 quarterback in Bryce Young and a 5'11 quarterback in Baker Mayfield, and you're seeing a lot of quarterbacks not seeing things down the field, and you're seeing quarterbacks getting stuff tipped and just not the best look and not great football, and that was not pretty. That was not pretty. And the crazy part is the Saints lost, Atlanta won, we still have to play Atlanta next week. We're right in the thick of things. I don't know how. I have no idea how, but they're in the thick of things. and They mess around and win next week, and the narrative changes. The Buccaneers win next week. All the narratives change, period. And then they're almost, they're, they're almost sitting back in that driver's seat. Now, that don't mean they're good enough to sweep anybody. They, they, they haven't even beat two. I don't believe they've won two games in a row. Well, they might have early in the season. But that's a long time ago, people. Been a long time since the Bucks won two in, two in a row, and we just beat the mighty, mighty, mighty Carolina Panthers at home. I mean, you know, if you beat a fat girl at fat camp, don't think you're fast. You see what I'm saying? We beat the slowest runner in the league after a catastrophe. I wouldn't brag on that one. I, w- I, would, I wouldn't brag on that one anytime soon. Because I know and I hope in that locker room, there's not a lot of kikiing. I hope it's not a lot of kikiing and people be feeling good about themselves because there's a lot of different ways you could discipline as a coach. But I think accountability might be the most important thing in coaching. And some of the press conferences I'm watching with Todd Bowles, and I don't have a lot of knocks on Todd Bowles, one of them may be this. Start making your players accountable. When you're saying, I keep on hearing him say, we're playing hard. No, you're not. If you took some of those defensive players and you put them in a 2001-99 Buccaneer defense, those guys are walking. The 99 and 2000 and 01 and those Buccaneer defense were flying everywhere. Up the field, down the field, knocking heads off. How dare you say these guys are playing hard? They're not playing hard. If you think that's hard, then that's where the standard is. I want my standard to be higher. And if you're telling JTS he's playing hard or Devin White he's playing hard or any of these cats are playing hard, maybe Antoine Winfield Jr. plays hard, but other than that, I wouldn't be putting the word hard on too many guys out there at all. Playing hard. You're playing hard. We should be running the ball every week for 150 yards and not 70 like we normally do. If you're playing hard, we got to have more sacks. If you're playing hard, you got to put the quarterback on the ground more often. You got to do things more consistently. Stop giving up so many darn yards rushing. All right? 133 yards rushing rushing we gave up to a one-dimensional football team at home. So it's just hard for me to sit here and gas up the Buccaneers today. If they win next week, It'll be a different feel. Uh, my mentality will be a little different, but I'm just not going to sit up here today and, and and say that we did anything or accomplished anything yesterday. Because there's, there's people in the know, they're like, well, I'm putting money on the Bucks," And I was like, well, I don't like putting money on bad football teams. And it was a three and a half point spread and they won by three. So if you learn anything, don't put money on bad football teams. And right now, the Buccaneers are a bad football team. So there was two bad football teams on the field yesterday. So you had to put your money on something. You should have put it on the under. Should have put it on the under. I don't know what that was, but I'm pretty sure that hit. Because there was a lot of offense on the field yesterday. And to be honest with you, there wasn't a whole lot of defense. It just was a lot of okay defenses with terrible offenses coming at them. 
and visually that that, that was that was, just wasn't overly appealing. It just it just wasn't. So now the Buccaneers got to figure out a way to beat Atlanta. You got to do some things different. But you have to also get back to the basics, okay? And it's real hard to get back to anything in the middle of a football season. Atlanta's not a great football team, but they do some things more consistent than the Buccaneers, that's for sure. To go on the road in the South and get a victory is, t- is tough to do. But uh, it's going to give us that hope. False hope is cool. Three and one, we have some false hope. You mess around and win the game this week, and we have some false hope. At least we have something to cheer about. It's better than nothing. A lot of teams right now that are already out of it, but the crazy part is a lot of those teams that are out of it have the same record we have, and we're still in this thing because of the putrid South. So we're blessed in one way or another. So I'll see you guys next week, and let's hope once again it's a victory Monday. Uh, you guys ever want to get in contact with me uh, social media wise it's Ian underscore Beckles I'm always here at the Dignitary Tea and Kava House 4817 Southwest Shore Boulevard best kava and kratom in town and uh, I'm on The Bone on every Saturday football show 1025 The Bone so I appreciate you guys and gals tuning in every single week Uh, let's hope our Buccaneers get it done again this week be safe everybody peace out